Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. This little green beauty that you see in front of you is a desk that I found on the street in New York City and we are going to be upcycling it. New York City is a fantastic place to find street treasures because nobody really has cars in New York and when you're getting rid of things you can't really take it to goodwill so a lot of the times people just donate things to the street and then most of the time they're only on the street for a couple of hours and then somebody takes them, cleans them up and implements them into their own home. People who live in Manhattan in the ritzier areas tend to have quite a bit of money and they get rid of really nice things. You can find a in mint condition like $2,000 dining table that people are throwing out because they just got a brand new $4,000 dining table. That happens all the time. Now this table is not a $2,000 dining table, but it is probably from Ikea. It is in great sturdy condition. The wheels still work. The one piece of advice that I have for you if you are going to be searching the streets for your next trash to treasure upcycle find is please use your brain. If it's dirty, pass it by. If it looks like it could possibly have bed bugs, pass it by. If it looks like a homeless man peed on it and rats crawl all over it, you should probably pass it up. But if it's really cool, you can always clean it. It's not really any different than buying things from a thrift store. People just made the effort to take it to the thrift store instead of just putting it on the street. And it's free. If you want to see what I do with this green monster, then stay tuned. I got my legs. Don't forget to subscribe and join the Whitney family. First things first, I'm just gonna give it a little wipe down. So now I'm just gonna take these wheels off. So with caster wheels like this, this part turns, but to get it off, you just have to turn the whole mechanism right here. You don't need any special like socket set or wrench or anything like that. They come off pretty easily. Just make sure you don't lose the little washer. I will be using this Rust-Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel in black. And I'm going to start with this upside down so I can get the legs really good and then flip it over. The top is not going to matter so much because we're going to be covering it in wood. I will be using these one by six by tens that I have left over that I want to put to use. But just so you know, any wood that you get from a big box store like Home Depot or Lowe's, they've been planed down. So you typically you lose about a quarter of an inch on your sizing. So a one by six is pretty much three quarters by five and a half. This is just a piece of plywood that I'm be using as an idea piece. So my desk is four feet long, which I have plenty of width by two feet in depth. If I have just the one by sixes next to each other, it's gonna be about one and three quarters inches short. So I was thinking of doing a little piece in the middle like this that has a contrasting stain to kind of give it a little bit more interest and then that would make up for the missing depth. And I'm gonna pull another one by six out and then we're gonna rip it down to the depth we need. I'm using a little piece of scrap wood along the back fence so I can get the saw to go all the way through and make a fully clean cut because sometimes it doesn't and I don't know why. When you're making your cuts, you don't want to cut right on the line because it'll take off a little bit for the width of the blade. You want to cut either on the outside or the inside of your line depending upon if you need this to be exactly four feet. I have this random piece of one by four that I've already ripped down. I think I just needed a little bit of piece to make an extension jam for a window. So this is about two and three quarters inches. So I'm gonna cut this down to four feet and then I will put it through my table saw to rip it down to my exact measurement that I need for that middle strip. So we just need one and seven eighths. So measure from your fence to your blade, one and seven eighths. Make sure you do your cut edges. You don't want to really round the corners, but you do want to get the splinters off. So personally, I'm not going to sand out all of these little imperfections because I think it gives it more character and the stain will kind of sink in there and make it a little bit darker. And I like that look, but if you don't like that, if you want it to be super clean, then go in with a heavier grit sandpaper and then you can get all of those imperfections out. But 
I like the character that these leave. So I will be using this Varathane in Early American. I was gonna use the Rust-Oleum, but it was so red. I did a little test on the back. Look at the difference between that. That's the Rust-Oleum Early American, and this is the Varathane. The Varathane is pretty close to the Minwax, but I do not like this, and I'm so glad I tested it out. And then for this little middle piece, I will be using the Minwax in Jacobean. Good thing I tested that, holy crap, I would've hated this. This is looking really nice, so let me show you what I have to glue it down with. I'm going to be using some Loctite Power Grab All-Purpose Construction Glue, and then for this you do need a caulking gun, but you could probably get away with E6000 maybe, um, or some Gorilla Glue, but definitely use a glue. I wouldn't use a caulk, like an adhesive caulk. You're going to need a glue. I have some regular old wood glue that I'll be putting in between these seams to kind of butt these up together, kind of like a butcher block, because I don't want any gaps in here. I want it to be pretty seamless. So we'll be using some wood glue for that. And then I happen to have some of these heavy duty long clamps that I will be putting this way to kind of squeeze the boards together. If you don't have anything like this, it's okay. You could tie a rope around it or you could just leave it alone. It's not a big deal. And then I have just some scrap wood that I will be using to lay across it and I'm gonna put some books or some bricks on top to kind of give it some pressure so the glue really adheres to the tabletop. Okay, let's get going. This Loctite glue grabs pretty quickly, but you do have about 15 minutes before it really sets. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my wood glue and glue the seams of the wood because this takes quite a while to dry. So I'm gonna do this first and then we will do this one. So I'm just gonna go in, not too much because I don't want it to really squeeze out. Then go back in with your finger and really thin it out. This is not going to hold it to the table, it's just going to hold them to each other. And if a little squeezes out, that's fine, but you don't want like a ton. So I'm going to turn all of these over so I can glue them all at once. Get this little nib cut off, you can use scissors, you can use a utility knife, or you can just stick it in there and get it off that way. Now, I'm just going to set it on there. I'm not going to press it down too hard, so just in case I'm going to shimmy these around a little bit. a clean, warm, wet rag, kind of get up some of this glue. Got all the wood on and clamped and set some bricks on top so it can get glued down. This is going to be awesome. 